أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى says in his glorious book and I did mention this verse last a couple of weeks ago in Surah Al-Zumar uh, that's chapter 39 verse 67 وما قدر الله حق قدره والأرض جميعا قبضته يوم القيامة the people who disobey Allah truly do not know him. And the continuation of the rest of the Surah Al-Zumar is the topic of today, inshallah. Now, it is the mercy of Allah Taala that he gives us a glimpse of the end so we can prepare for it. Because if we did not know what's going to happen, you know, the, it, it is much more powerful, and Allah says, this is what's going to happen in the, in the hereafter, so prepare for it. And this is exactly what Surah Az-Zumar does at the end. In verse 68, Allah wa ta'ala says, وَنُفِخَ فِي السُّورِ فَسَعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ نُفِخَ فِيهِ أُخْرَى فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يَنْظُرُونَ And the horn will be blown, and whoever is in the heavens and whoever is on earth will fall dead, except whom Allah wills. Then it will be blown again, and at once they will be standing, looking on. Now Allah Taala has issued a death sentence for everything. But the implementation of it is up to his choosing. We get born, we have a, an a termination date. We have an end date, we just don't know when it is. It's 60 years, 70 years, 20 years, we don't know. But it's coming. So that, that sentence is there. And on the day of judgment, when the, when the horn is blown, everything dies. And only Allah Taala remains. And, you know, every one of us have plans usually 20, 30 years ahead. And we have no idea if we're going to be alive in an, an hour from now. That's, that's hope. That for human, their hopes be, extend beyond their lifespan. And Allah Taala is telling us there is an end date when everything will die and they will be resurrected again to be ans to answer for for all their deeds. So the final order is when Allah orders the the angel to blow in the horn, everything dies, and then when He blows in it again, everybody resurrects and they're standing around looking. And qiyamun yandurun doesn't mean they're looking, it means they're anticipating. Yantadirun. What is going to happen to us when they get out from the grave? It's like, why are, you know, what, what's going to happen? That's what yandurun is, not, not that they are just looking around. Imagine if you want to, you know, to have a picture, if you have hostages, somebody got kidnapped and they have them in a cell. And suddenly the cell door opens and everyone is ordered to get outside. Now that's, that's the image of horror and fear. They don't know. Are we getting released? Are they going to kill us? They don't know. They don't know what's going to happen. And that's the state of man who is heedless of Allah, who does not believe on the day of judgment. The earth will spit them out and they'll be looking around and like, oh my God, what, are, you know, what have I done? then they're going to be waiting and anticipating what's going to happen to them. Are they going to go to heaven or are they going to go to hell? Now, of course, the one who lived in sin all their lives, and then the angel of death came and took him, and then, you know, the horn gets blown and they get resurrected, that person is going to be in a lot of trouble. They're going to be in a lot of fear because that's the day that they used to deny. They did not believe that there will be a day when they're going to have to answer for their deeds. So in, in this life, we can do whatever we want. You can repent. As long as life is in the body, you can repent. You can make up for any mistake that you do. But once death comes, that's it. The, the, book, is, the book is sealed. And resurrection is the time when the repayment of everything that we have done in this life, that's when it's realized. We don't know the extent of what we have done in this life until the day of resurrection. 
So all these sleepless nights, praying qiyam, all this reading of the Quran, all the, all the lowering the gaze, spending out of the wealth, doing things for Allah's sake, and also lying, cheating, hurting others. You know, the extent of all of these actions that man does in this life, that's the day of resurrection and the day of qiyamah, is when it all will, will be realized. Verse 69. And the earth will shine with the light of its Lord, and the record of deeds will be placed, and the prophets and the witnesses will be brought, and it will be judged between them in truth, and they will not be wronged. Now this life is full of misery, is full of injustice, you know, and oppression, and so on. I mean, people are killed just because they say, our Lord is Allah, for, for no reason whatsoever, for no fault of their own. Now, ashraqat, the, the term ashraqat, when you say the sun comes up, you say sharaqat. Ashraqat means it illuminated. So if darkness is, if dhulm, if oppression is darkness on the day of judgment, then light is justice. So the verse saying that the land will be illuminated with Allah's justice. That that's the day of justice. That's the day when Allah's name, Al-Haq, the just, is fully realized. In this life, it's, it's partially there. It's not, it's, you know, because people can commit all kind, anything that they want and then they die. But if you take into account what happens in the hereafter, then the name Allah Al-Adl, the just, will, will be very clear. So, وَأَشْرَقَتِ الْأَرْضُ بِنُورِ رَبِّهَا Then the earth will illuminate with the justice of Allah. And this is a consolation, this verse is a consolation for anyone who was wronged in this life. It says, don't worry. At some point on the day of judgment, your rights will be fully given to you. You will not be wronged. And the person who wronged you is going to wish that they were not born. Because they will have to face Allah's justice. And there are no skilled lawyers in Allah's courtyard. In Allah's court, there are no lawyers. Because Allah is just, and your actions and your body and everything will be a witness, witness for you or against you. So the goal of every believer is to reach this day with no claims on you. No, you, there is no rights that you took from anyone that they're going to come and demand that, that be given back. That is the goal of every believer. You want to reach you know, the, the day of resurrection and nobody has any claims, any outstanding claims against you. الكتاب, and the record of deeds is on display. Now, the norms that people distinguish themselves in this life, like, you know, s strong, you're smart, you're handsome, you're, you're skilled, you're bright, all of these are, are things that people distinguish themselves in this life. Those have no meaning and no value on the Day of Judgment. The only thing that matters on that day is how well did you know Allah? How well did you obey Him? Did you exert yourself in, in helping others and in His obedience? That's, what's gonna, that's the only thing that's going to be of value. Not how much money did you accumulate, how many degrees did you hang on your wall. Those are meaningless. They help you in this life, but they are not of any help in the hereafter. So every action, every word, every intention, everything that man does in this life is in this detailed book. وَوُدِعَ الْكِتَابِ Your life will be replayed for you in front of your own eyes. And Allah will ask, why did you do this? Why did you say this? Why? Why? There's a lot of whys. Why did you do this? And you cannot say anything because Allah will seal the mouth. And your, your skin will testify. Your hands will testify. The ground you walked on will testify. Everything that around you will testify. 
So if someone tells you you're under surveillance, you will be on your best behavior. And this is in a worldly setting. You know, the government is monitoring your phone and has microphones and videos in your house. How are you going to behave? You will behave like an ideal person, right? So how about Allah's audit? How about the watch of Allah and the angels recording every deed? Is, doesn't that you know, warrant that we actually pay attention to that and behave the way Allah wants us to behave? So we can do whatever we want in this life. But prepare an answer for Allah. Why? Why did you do this? Why did you say this? Prepare an answer. If you have no answer, do not do it. Do not attempt it if you do not have a convincing answer that's going to save you on the day of judgment. You get a ticket in the mail. You know, you, you, read, you ran a, a red light. You know, that person that receives that is going to be cursing and yelling and screaming bloody murder and injustice and blah, blah, blah. And then they look and there's a link. You click on the link and the video of your you sitting in the car with the car, the light turning red, the car passing the line with the light red. What's the answer? I mean, what's the reaction? Complete silence. Allah's justice will silence everyone. What can you say? It's right there replayed in front of you. And this is inwardly thing. A video would silence a criminal when they have irrefutable evidence of their crime. How do you think that Allah's book, this book of deed, how, do you, how, how advanced do you think it is? It would silence everyone. You cannot say a word because your action, you are your own witness that's testifying against you. Here's your life. Why did you do it? Answer. But I didn't know. Some may claim. Ignorance in the court of Allah is not a valid excuse. There is no such thing as I didn't know. Tell Allah the truth. Tell Allah you did not want to know. It's not a matter of you didn't know. You did not want to bother. Put the time. Get, learn about Allah. Learn about His commands. You did not want to do it. And that's why people go in the wrong direction because they don't, they want to follow their desires. They do not want to invest the time in, in, in following Allah and obeying Him. The rest of the verse, وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابُ وَجِيءَ بِالنَّبِيِّينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءُ the, uh, the book of deeds is on display. But that's not enough. The prophets will be brought did you, did you advise the people of this day? Yes, my Lord. We all did. Okay. Shuhada. Let the, let the witnesses come. Now, shuhada could be the angels that are sitting with you. Because the verse in Surah Qaf, verse 21, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَعَهَا سَائِقٌ وَشَهِيدٌ On the day of judgment, everyone will come with two angels. One angel pulling him from the neck and the other one witnessing against them. So shaheed could be the angels that are with you, writing and documenting everything. Shaheed could also be the people who died for the, for the sake of Islam, so that our name will be Ahmed and Muhammad and Abdullah, and that Islam will, will spread throughout the land. But the, the best explanation for shuhada that I found is the scholars. The scholars, the imams, the people who advise the people, they're going to be a witness for you or against you. They warned you. They warned you of that this day is coming. They warned you not to misbehave. They warned you to obey Allah. And Allah will bring the prophets. They'll bring those shuhada. What other excuse do you have? Tell Allah, I did not want to bother. There was a game on. I did not want to. Well, you know, there was a lesson going on in the masjid. I did not want to bother because the meal was there and, and you know, football afterwards. And then I have to go shopping. Be honest. Be honest with yourself. And that's the answer that you're going to be giving Allah. When He asks you, you have so many opportunities to learn. So many opportunities to avoid the horrors of that day. But you did not invest. You did not want to bother. Be, you know, be honest. So, you know, don't say, I did not know. Say, I did not want to know. وَقُدِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ وَهُمْ لَا يَظْلَمُونَ There is no injustice in Allah's court. 
Allah is just. He will not mistreat anyone. You will get the full justice that you deserve in Allah's court. So Allah basically puts the perfect justice and illuminates the world. And then he brings the book of deeds. Then he summons the prophets and the witnesses, the angels and the scholars to refute any excuses. What, what better justice do you want? وَوُفِّيَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا عَمِلَتْ وَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَفْعَلُونَ In, in uh, Surah Al-Zumar, verse 17. And every soul will be fully compensated for what it did. And he is most knowing of what they do. Allah Taala knows everything that, that we do. He knows it better than, than ourselves. And there is no injustice in Allah's court. He may reward and punish in this life according to his wisdom. But that is not wawufiyat. Wawufiyat kullu nafsin. The term wufiyat is full compensation. If somebody does good in this life and Allah rewards them, that's a down payment. That's a small down payment. If somebody misbehaves and Allah punishes him, that's a small down payment. The full repayment is on the day of judgment. That's wawufiyat. Complete and just settling of the account. So when you see a good person and Allah does not reward them in this life, don't let your faith be shaken. Allah may have delayed his reward till, till the day of judgment. And if you see somebody who is evil, has everything in this life, and you know, healthy like a horse, do not be disturbed because Allah may have left his punishment to the hereafter. But know one thing that Allah is just and he will fully settle the account on the day of judgment. In verse 71, that's the, uh, the reason the name Surah Zumar was uh, groups. Zumar is the groups. Allah says, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَ زمرة. حتى إذا جاءوها فتحت أبوابها وقال لهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم رسل منكم يتلون عليكم آيات ربكم وينذرونكم لقاء يومكم هذا قالوا بلى ولكن حقت كلمة العذاب على الكافرين. So the criminals will be driven, will be driven in groups, and their driving is like driving a criminal to be hung. It's going to be with insults, with roughness. It's going to be a very bad driving. And they will be driven in groups. The murderers will be one group. The rapists will be one group. The cheaters will be in one group because Allah is just. Everyone will be driven with people like him. So make sure what person you want to be driven to Allah to with. They reach, you know, they are driven. They have no idea what, where they're going. They're driven and they're, you know, they're all full of, full of, they're terrified. They are terrified because the angels are beating them and, and driving them. And what are we doing? Where are we going? And all of a sudden, the doors of hell open up. If that image is not enough to scare you into, into obedience to Allah, I don't know what will. I mean, Allah gave us the mind to imagine, to imagine the future before you get to it. So you prepare for it. So they, got, you know, they don't know where they're going. The doors open and the angels are yelling at them. Didn't you, weren't you warned that you are coming to this day? Weren't you warned that there's going to be a day that you're going to show up to, hell, to hellfire? They said yes. What, what they can, they cannot deny. They were warned. They just chose not to, not to listen. The ones who are arrogant to obey Allah and be, and be on his directions in this life, they are arrogant. They deserve to go to hell. And that's why arrogance, the Prophet says, an atom of arrogance would prevent a person from going to, to heaven because arrogance and obedience to Allah don't, don't meet together. And they cannot exist in the same person. You either submit completely to Allah or you're arrogant, you want to do whatever the heck you want. The two cannot, cannot meet. Now the opposite 
is wasiqa alladhina taqaw rabbahum ila aljannati zumra also the, the believers will be driven in groups but it's totally a different way of driving it's the driving of a delegation an honored delegation that comes in with the red carpets and the drinks and and you know everyone telling them nice things and they are just driven with all gentleness that that's the driving of the believers to Allah and they will be in groups the people who made qiyam will be in a group the people who did optional things will be in a group the people who obeyed Allah and helped others will be in a group which group do you want to be in we have full of yeah we have full ability you decide what what group do you want to be in you cannot wish to be with the, with the people who make qiyam al layl and you don't want to even bother get out of bed in the middle of the night when it's cold to pray you have to put the effort when you put the effort then you deserve to be driven to Allah in all honor with those groups. So pick the group that you want to be in. And their, their driving is حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا They were driven and the doors of heaven opens. And notice there's a wa, there's an extra wa, وَفُتِحَتْ For the unbelievers, فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا وَفُتِحَتْ the wa gives you the impression that a lengthy time, a time has passed. So the believers were still far away from heaven and the doors opened and they can see it. And they are happy because they can see they're not there yet. But for the unbelievers, it was a sudden. It was all of a sudden to increase in their horror and their punishment. وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ تِبْتُمْ فَادْخُلُوهَا خَالِدِينَ and the angels will say, welcome. You know, tiptum. Tiptum means you purified yourself. Because you purified yourselves, you deserve to enter heaven. You cannot enter heaven without purifying yourself. Sincerity to Allah is what purifies you. You know, you purify it from lying. You purify it from cheating. You purify it from, from worshipping other than Allah. You purify it from, you know, from any shirk. That's what, you know, tiptum. Because you purified yourselves, you deserve to enter heaven. It's well deserved. Enter. And it's the mercy of Allah that he allows the believers to see hellfire. They don't, it won't hurt them. They will see it. And that increases in their appreciation and their happiness that they were saved from it. وترى الملائكة حافين من حول العرش يسبحون بحمد ربهم وقضي بينهم بالحق وقيل الحمد لله رب العالمين. The believers are happy and thankful. The angels are happy and thankful. And because of Allah's justice, the only sentence that all of creation can say is الحمد لله رب العالمين. الحمد لله. Because you cannot say any, any more fitting word then thank you Allah. Thank you for allowing us to live in this life and work and earn heaven. Just like somebody who went to school for 20 years to be a doctor, he looks fondly on the days of when he was working and sleepless nights and all the effort that they put. And they look fondly on it as if I didn't put that effort, I would not enjoy the, you know, the, the, the position that I'm in now. And the people in heaven, same thing. Our life is very short. 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, 150. It's still, compared to eternity, is nothing. When you compare anything to eternity, is nothing. It, isn't it worth that we put a little bit of effort in this life to deserve the hereafter? And, and the verse, فَنِعْمَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ How excellent is the reward for عَامِلِينَ he didn't say qailin, he said amilin. The ajr, the reward is for doing, not saying. You can claim you're a Muslim all you want. If you do not prove it and show it with action, we show it from, by volunteering your time, your expertise, your money, your wealth. If you don't show it with action, that, does, that verse is not talking about you. فَنِعْمَ أَجْرَ الْعَامِلِينَ you have to work, you have to work and show Allah that my faith is getting implemented in action. 
So in conclusion, there are many matters that worries us, and we give different importance to it. You know, health, family, work, marriage, we, we give certain amount of preference to each one. But matters of faith, it permeates your whole life and it extends to the hereafter and to eternity. Isn't it worth that we give it a little bit more attention than we do? The most concerning thing about faith is not that whether you believe or not. Everyone will believe. It's when do you believe. Do you believe early when it helps you? Or do you believe when the angel of death comes? That belief does not help. So as death approaches us, and nobody can deny it, if anyone here can, you know, thinks that they will never die, I don't know, I mean, you need to have your head checked. This is one fact that everyone knows. You will die. You have to die one day. We don't know what that is. And that's from the mercy of Allah that he did not tell us when that, when that you know, time is going to be. So the death is approaching. We should schedule life around faith, not the other way around. You schedule your outings around the times of prayer, not your prayers around the time for shopping and for work and things like that. We have to give importance to matter of faith if we want to be successful. And as Surah Zumar is trying to tell us, what group do you want to be in? Which group do you want to be in and how do you want to be driven to Allah because you are getting driven to Allah one way or another? How do you want to be driven? Do you want to be driven with honor or do you want to be driven with hardness? Do you want to be, and who, among who do you want to be? Do you want to be with, with, with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, and, and his companions? Or do you want to be with the least of, of the believers? It's, it's up to us. It's up to us. All we have to do is put the effort.